on today guys so welcome back i apologize for missing a few episodes but in this episode i'm going to explain to you guys why uh we missed that episode so basically um the race that i did uh this past weekend the half marathon that i did this past weekend is uh, almost a four hour drive uh it was almost a four hour drive away so we had to leave early because we ended up getting a hotel room so we had to leave early and i had a lot of stuff going on that week so i had to get everything um that was super important uh going on finished um, and that's why i didn't want to rush out an episode that wasn't really that great or anything like that so um i promised you guys two episodes this week I appreciate everybody that's been watching. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. I'll say it again at the end of this video. Um, and in this video, we're just going to be going over, um, and on this podcast, I guess I should say, since some of y'all probably listen on the podcast platforms, um, all podcast platforms are up. Uh, if you are on Spotify, if you're on Apple Music, whatever it is, we're up there. Uh, I appreciate all the support on every platform. But anyways, yeah, so... Basically, reason why we didn't get an episode out last week was because of the half marathon that I had. Uh, it was actually in Garland Mountain, uh, up in the mountains of Georgia. So about a three and a half hour, four hour drive away from me. We ended up staying at a hotel not too far from there. The hotel was about an hour away from there. Um, but yeah, so that went pretty good this past weekend. That was the first actual race that I have raced in since I started running. Um, for anybody who's wondering, I really just got into, if you haven't listened to the 75 hard episode that I have up, uh, I really just got into running, honestly, right when I was doing 75 hard. So I would say probably about two to three months is about the amount of time that I've actually been trying to be competitive at running. Um, and this whole episode is gonna be focused on the uh, half marathon, uh, so running in general, fitness, half marathon, all that stuff. It's just going to be this episode since I did promise you guys two episodes this week. One's going to be focused on fitness. One's going to be focused on real estate. And if that is something that you guys like, I might end up doing that um, continuously. So just releasing two episodes a week and one that's focused on fitness and one that's focused on the real estate industry. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but anyways, yeah, half marathon. It was a trail uh, run. And they do basically like a series of trail runs. So whoever, uh, it's usually four total trail runs. Um, and whoever is the winner at the end is the overall winner of the series. And then they do like singles uh, winners. So that was the only one I did. And I ended up for my age group coming in fourth. Uh, and I wanna say my time was two hours and 11 minutes. Um, I'm not as sure the exact, exact time, but I'm pretty sure it was right at two hours and 11 minutes. Um, and so the elevation gain was around 2000 feet. And honestly, I, ru I run on the road all the time. Um, I've done half marathon distance before, um, but it was all always on the road. Um, and I've also done some trail runs. I mean, like, I'm not back before I was serious about running. I used to um, do like rucking and I would do weighted vest runs. Um, and most of the time, I would try and do those on a trail just to keep um, my legs, just to get like a leg workout in. So, uh, that type of thing. But honestly, I knew that when we got there and people were talking about how hard this trail was, that I was probably uh, underestimating how hard it was. Uh, because usually, honestly, I can run like for distance, uh, mar half marathon distance, I can usually run about a uh, seven minute, 30 second pace. So that's not anything crazy or anything. It's just um, much faster than what I ended up running it uh, when I went to this half marathon. I think my average pace was right at 10 minutes, uh, average pace per mile. So yeah, so obviously pretty big gap there. Um, and it was mainly because I underestimated the course uh, usually when I hear, I'm from North Carolina originally, so usually when I hear like mountains of Georgia, I don't think anything too crazy because I have been uh, through the mountains and driven through the mountains here. So I usually don't think anything too crazy because usually it's not necessarily the same as what I'm used to. Um, but I will say that was a very technical trail. It was a tough trail. The trail was well kept. Um, I mean, there was water crossings, 
multiple water crossings. Um, there was multiple times when you're going like almost straight up on an incline for um, a mile and a half, two miles. So that really um, added to my time. Um, but like I said, fourth place overall, very happy with that, uh, especially for my first run. Um, I couldn't find any road races in a like that were close time wise um, to me. So I just ended up having to do a trail run. And I mean, it was super fun. My body has pretty much recovered from it. Um, and now I'm back to running uh, normally like I would. I took about two days off after that. The only thing I'll say is uh, mainly that um, when you're going downhill, it's a little bit different um, when you're navigating a trail just because like, it for me, it put more, um, pressure on my knees and it was just a little bit harder for me to like not fully extend my um, knee. If you're a runner, you probably know that like you don't want to fully extend your knee um, when you land. So yeah, basically that was it. I mean, fourth place overall, obviously I wanted to do better. I think the guy who came in first place got like an hour and 47 minutes or 45 minutes, something around there um, to finish the whole thing. So obviously I want to get much better for when I do it next time, because it was a very well put together and very fun race. It was the Garland Mountain Trail Run. Um, you can look it up, they have a website, that's how I found it. Um, and like I said, they have the whole series. So if you do wanna do all four races, you can sign up for the series and then you'll go to a different trail each time and do a race. Um, but it was very well put together. It was super cool, super fun. Um, and I'm very glad that that was the first race that I've, uh, that I competed in because it was, I mean, it was awesome. Um, met some cool people up there and it was just a really fun weekend. Um, but yeah, so another thing that I kind of wanted to go over is like, I don't know if a lot of you guys, um, agree with like me putting fitness and real estate together. Um, I guess I don't know if agree is the right word, but just don't really understand maybe why I would kind of try and link the two things. Um, but for me, it's mainly because one, with fitness I've always, even if you're doing a solo sport, with fitness I've always found that there's a community behind you. Um, even if you're, if you're on a team sport, obviously that community is gonna be your team and then you can build relationships with people um, who, are, who you're competing against, stuff like that. But even if you're a single, if you're doing a single sport like running, tennis, anything like that, like the community that you get to meet from doing those things is usually something that's really awesome. Um, and especially in real estate, like, I, I mean, my whole job is usually, I mean, part of my job, I guess not my whole job, but part of my job is connecting with people and seeing what they need help with. Um, and it's awesome to be able to connect with somebody who always has, who already has something that interests you, uh, it, that, also interest them. So like if they are interested in running like I am, we have that, com we share that common interest is what I'm trying to say. Um, so it's awesome to be able to connect with them on a genuine level um, because for me, I always wanna connect with people genuinely. I mean, if you were to just connect with people just because that's your job, um, then in my mind, you're doing the right thing for the wrong reason. Um, and if that, if you're do even though you're doing the right thing, if you're doing it for the wrong reason, then it's not sustainable. Um, that's just how I feel. That's what I believe. Um, but yeah, so that is why, partially why I put fitness and um, real estate in the same category because I believe that it can greatly help you. Um, you can create relationships that way. Uh, you have a community that surrounds you. That um, one, you're the interest is already there. You, you already have something to talk about. You already have a way to connect, everything like that. And then also after that fact, you also have the competitive level, competitiveness that is involved with any type of sport. So for me, if I'm not being competitive in some sort of way like that, um, it just really slows me down and I just don't feel that I am uh, operating at 100%. Uh, I always want to have something to strive for just like within my within the real estate industry you can see people who are um, doing things different than, differently than you you see people that are closing more deals than you you see people that are inter uh, that are 
doing new things within the industry and they're working for them. So with the uh, real estate, it also, it just brings it into, like there's a competitiveness in, in within real estate, there just is. Um, so because I run, because I do fit, because I'm physically fit, all that good stuff, um, it gives me, I would say, uh, a mental edge to continue that on into uh, my day to day with real estate. Um, so those are just kind of why I, I tie, that's just kind of why I tie the two things together. Um, just because it really helps me out and I'm sure I can't be the only one. Um, I've seen a ton of cool stuff within real estate where people, um, that people focus on. Uh, and I mean, it's really just about being genuine, about being themselves. I mean, like I said a second ago, um, if you're doing the right thing for the wrong reason, I don't believe that's sustainable. If you're doing the right thing for the right reason, then I think you're on a very, very solid path. Um, I've seen some people focus around like their love for tattoos in real estate and how like just because you're tattooed up doesn't mean that you can't sell houses just as well as anybody else. You're not just as approachable as anybody else. Like um, just some really awesome stuff. But that's my kind of my idea behind fitness and real estate. Um, and I just wanted to break that down for you guys. I know I said I'm gonna give you guys two episodes, one that's focused on real estate, so I don't wanna harp on that too much, but that was just, that's just kind of the idea and I like to break that down um, for anybody who hasn't maybe hasn't listened to the prior episodes or anything like that. Um, and I also, I talk about it quite often to other people that are around me, um, just because not everybody's the same, so I like to get, I like to hear what other people have to think about the competitiveness um, and like, basically what I just talked about, like from their perspective. So <clears throat> yeah, but anyways, that, and then what we've got coming up, uh, I'm trying to get into long distance weeks. So basically I haven't been focusing too much on finding other races to do. I've just been focusing on trying to get my training correct um, and following an actual program because starting out obviously when I was just uh, starting out running for 75 hard. I wasn't following a program. So now I'm trying to get to where um, I'm just following a, a specific program that I have in place for strength and um, running so that hopefully I can um, get better more quickly and all that good stuff. Um, so I would say um, maybe shooting for 40 to 60 mile weeks. Um, so 40 miles to 60 miles per week total um, is what I'm shooting for right now because I do have the other, the full marathon coming up in November in Raleigh, North Carolina. So I would like to be at where I could at least maintain a, I would say around a seven to 7.30 pace for that marathon distance. Um, just because, like I said, I do love running and all that stuff, but I also love being competitive. I love being really good at what I do. So um, I do wanna be competitive. I think it's fun. I think being competitive is fun. Some people think that running is just fun just because they can go out and do it. And that's awesome as well. I just like to be competitive. So that's why I'm following the program. That's why I'm being pretty strict with it. Um, I'm trying to get all my miles in every single day, all the way up to that. And then um, one thing I have learned from doing fitness for so long though, is that it is perfectly fine. Like if you feel like you're getting burnt out, it's perfectly fine to just like take a step back and say like, hey, yo, I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna change it up for a little bit. Um, just because a lot of times if you don't do that, you'll get burnt out on it, you know? so. It's just one of those things that uh, you just have to look at it and, and make sure that you're still having fun um, like you were when you originally started. So, but yeah, um, that's the idea going up into November. And really, I mean, just being strict about those day, the day-to-day -day, um, diet-wise, uh, exercise-wise, uh, and everything like that. Um, that is basically it on the fitness front. Um, I've just been kind of recovering. I recovered up to, uh, after, the, after the half marathon, I took uh, 
the half marathon was on a Saturday, so I took up to that Wednesday off. Um, and I felt fine, like on probably um, by Monday. I felt fine, but I didn't want to stress my body just because my knee did hurt a little bit and I didn't want to push it um, just because I know there had been a lot of impact on my knee from running that half, uh, run on the trails, running on the rocks and everything like that, running downhill um, and everything. So I just took up to Wednesday off and then started again on Wednesday um, and did a three mile on Wednesday, did four miles yesterday. And <clears throat> tomorrow will be a, uh, I mean, not tomorrow. Today will be a shorter run um, that I haven't done yet, but it'll be a shorter run because tomorrow will be a long run. Luckily, I live close to um, some pretty hilly terrain uh, with decent uh, ascents and descents that are actually paved, roads go through them. So I'm gonna start doing uh, some longer runs up there so I can get used to the hill climbs and everything like that. Um, and it'll just be better on my, um, build up more strength in my legs and everything. So that'll be Saturday and then Sunday will be completely off. And then we'll start again next week and we'll see where that goes. Um, but like I said, I am following a certain program. So if anybody cares to know what I am doing, um, you can just get up with me and I'll be happy to share who I, um, whose program I'm following and everything like that. Um, but mainly I do two workouts a day. One of them's, uh, run focused and one of them strength focused. So I really find that, uh, for anybody who's running distance, strength in the legs is a big thing. And I think it's kind of under, um, estimated within the running world because a lot of times you see runners that are super skinny and just super lightweight, tall and stuff like that. But I'm pr like, from what I've, or from what I've experienced so far, um, run strength in the legs is just important, just as important as breathing, um, form, anything like that. So, uh, I do think that it is very important to focus on leg strength while you are, um, training instead of just maybe like distance or like doing fast paced tempo runs or whatever um, it may be. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for this uh, little segment of it. Um, I always like to break down that stuff for you guys. Um, I will say this, I didn't really say anything about this, but um, when I was growing up, like usually especially sports wise because I've just always been infatuated with uh, competition I like um, I love sports uh, and when I was younger all the way up in, into my adult age I would say um, uh, before this before like my fitness journey into 75 hard and really losing a bunch of weight and getting really back focused to um, being physically fit and taking care of my health and everything like that before that I was really into CrossFit and I was getting to a point where I was trying to train for competitions. If anybody knows anything about CrossFit though, there's like, like I'm 5'9", five, 5'10", five, and weigh 160 pounds. And I mean, I'm not the strongest guy, like strength wise in the book. I'm, I mean, I'm pretty quick and I can do good, I'm good at gymnastic movements and stuff like that just because of how light I am. Um, but if anybody knows anything about CrossFit, like I was saying, there's a lot of people who are really strong, really flexible. Um, and I was getting into that um, really heavy. So I would probably say, I don't know, I would spend maybe like four or five hours a day in the gym every day, except for Wednesdays and Saturdays were my rest days, but they were active recovery days. So, I mean, I was still in the gym, just not as long. And I was doing more of like, just doing little bike sessions and stuff like that. Um, but the point of me saying this is, is that before running, I was really into CrossFit and because I was so into CrossFit and had found something that uh, had infatuated me so much, um, I, didn't re I didn't really think of it as a big deal because I've always, like I said, I've always been into fitness, but I had a lot of people around me telling me like, yo, this is taking over your life, you're, you're too, um, you're too obsessed with these things. Like you get obsessed with something and then you just kind of drop it. And I want to, I want to just bring this up because I feel like that a lot of people get told that being obsessed with something is not the way. Like you, you just can't be obsessed with something forever. Like it's just gonna, you're gonna 
quit enjoying it after a while if you're uh, too overly obsessed. And I've been told that since I was young because a lot of things that I really, really enjoy, I'll focus on really, really heavily. And uh, I want to, I believe that because of me being told that from a young age that I believed it, I started to believe it. And it was just recently, maybe a month ago, that I heard somebody say, um, it was Nick Bear, um, Bear Performance Nutrition. He owns Bear Performance Nutrition, and I was watching his, he's got a video on YouTube that I can link um, about his three hour, sub three hour marathon. And I was watching that video, and uh, I was listening to his podcast also, where he talks about um, and reads from his book, um, so I was listening to that, watching the video, and I heard him mention multiple times about how he was extremely obsessed with these goals. And that's how he's gotten to where he is today. Um, and I don't know how you feel about Nick Bear. I don't know. I mean, that's not the point of this. The point is, is that it took me hearing that from somebody that was at a very elite high level in not only fitness, but also within his business um, to understand that being a, completely obsessed with something is not a bad thing. Um, sure, you want to pay attention to other things within your within life and the other things that are going on, but being completely obsessed with something and building the, building the circle around you to accommodate what you're obsessed with I don't, in any sense of the word, form, anyway, think that that is a bad thing. And I think that people that um, tell you that you're too obsessed with something are watching you change, whether it be um, with fitness, more than likely it's for the better. Um, so why, change scares a lot of people. And they're going to, and until you are very, very successful at something, they're gonna say, oh, well, you're too obsessed with this. You spend too much time on this, blah, 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 blah. But then when it pays off and they see all the, all the everything um, that you've achieved from it, they're gonna say like, oh yeah, good job. Like that was, that's awesome. Like da, 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 da. I know you've probably heard this like analogy before in books about like where people like your biggest, um, like sometimes your family is your biggest downfall because they're gonna they're gonna see you changing. They're gonna see you knocking people out of their your life because they're just too uh, detrimental to what you have going on. So <clears throat> that's kind of the idea. Is the same the same idea as that. Like people just don't like to see you change. And most of the time, those people that are telling you that you're too obsessed with something are the people who are just afraid that you're gonna change and you're gonna leave them behind because they don't have what they don't have any either they don't have ambition to change or they're too afraid to change or they think that they can't do something um in the and execute it the way that you are so just take that as a ending food for thought um i wholeheartedly believe that if you are obsessed with something that you can i mean i don't care what it is it doesn't matter what it is most of the time um unless you're just like obsessed with like doing drugs or something weird but if you, you are wholeheartedly obsessed with something that is um and you're doing it like i said earlier for the right reasons um and for what was it um uh, for the what did i say a second ago for the right reasons and hmm, there was something else i don't know but like i said if you're wholeheartedly uh doing it for the for the right reasons then go after it um and, it, and if it's good for other people especially if it's going to be benefit you your family others around you then um being obsessed with something i don't think is at all a bad thing so just a food for thought on that um but yeah guys i appreciate all the support sorry about missing last week um if you're on if you're watching on youtube like comment subscribe uh comment anything that you took away from this video send me a message and say hey i want to be on the podcast and talk about this or i want to um uh i think you should do this better or whatever i'm still learning this is all just a little um fun thing for me to do uh and i i mean i truly enjoy it uh so yeah like, comment, subscribe. I'll have all my socials in the in the uh, com I mean in the description, so you can follow me on there. 
it's easy to get up with me. You can find my all my information on my Instagram. Um, yeah, but I appreciate you guys tuning in. And on the next one, uh, like I said, I've got two coming out on the same day. So on the next one, we'll do some real estate focused stuff. But I appreciate you guys, and I will talk to y'all soon.